that was fighting for gay rights mm -hmm. and people were killed. Nobody they were killed at Stonewall. Nobody was no, killed. Nobody. When Alexis Mateo said on All Stars 5 episode 5 that India Farah was a liar, and this is why Derek don't like her. You're a liar, and this is why Derek don't like you. It got me thinking about what really transpired between Derek and India for there to be such a rivalry between them for the entire one episode they competed together. After looking into it, I ended up finding out a somewhat full scope of the story. Today, we will be discussing how India Farah would end up having a public feud with Derek Barry and Nebraska, as well as the drama that happened with Alexis Mateo while on the show. Before we begin, please remember to subscribe if you haven't already, and follow me on Twitter at GreenGayYT for updates on future content. Now, let's begin. If you've watched all Stars 5, then you'd know that Derek wasn't all that shy about showing her disdain towards certain cast members. In Watch a Packing, Derek says that he disagreed with a lot of the negative things that India had said about the franchise in the past, which is why she was so surprised to see that India had actually been invited back. Yes. She spoke out against the show, yes, which she did. I don't agree with. She also quit drag at one point. Which I do agree with. Yeah. If you're wondering what it was that Derek was referring to, in the year 2012, India posted on Facebook a post that she would later on delete where she said some pretty controversial things about the production of RuPaul's Drag Race, along with her feelings about how she felt after the airing of season 3. The lengthy post includes India saying that the production of Drag Race doesn't actually have a clue when it comes to the art form of drag, adding that RuPaul's Drag Race gives not just the drag community, but also gay people a bad name. India then says that she didn't succumb to peer pressure, alleging that other contestants had been doing drugs while filming the show. Which honestly was probably just weed. Anyway, India's point is that she didn't need to succumb to the peer pressure to win a fake TV show, especially one that was bringing down drag. India particularly didn't like how the show was now influencing the way that queens in real life were dressing themselves up. Because quote, back in the day, if you walked into a bar dressed in jeans, a girl's t-shirt, and a wig, you were assumed to be a cross-dresser. Nowadays, it's what drag is. Which of course we have her Rebecca Glasscock from season 1 to think, because she showed the world that you could wear jeans and still make it to the top 3. India also seems to miss how the pageant systems used to be used as a metric for a queen's success, instead of how queens are able to find success simply by being on the show. It's interesting because as a reminder, the post was made in 2012, and one of her main arguments is essentially how accessible doing drag had become to people, because there was now performers who were literally just wearing clothes from the mall, which in India's eyes wasn't real drag. It's funny because now more than 10 years later, we have the exact opposite problem. Drag has become so elevated that there's a lot more expected from what even local queens will deliver. She also seemed to be very upset with Rue girls who were transitioning and not informing their fans about the status of their gender identity. Basically, to India, the franchise of RuPaul's Drag Race was something that she wanted nothing to do with moving forward, because it had affected her so bad that she ended up quitting drag altogether, which of course was the whole purpose of the post she made. So you might be wondering, for how how long did India quit drag? Well, India ended up returning to drag just a couple months after making her lengthy goodbye post. She decided that she would try to work hard and establish herself as a respectful drag queen within the community. Eventually, she got a full-time hosting job at Piranha Nightclub, which is a very popular nightclub in Las Vegas. It's at this club where she got to know Derek Barry in Nebraska. Yet suddenly, after working there for many years, India was ultimately fired for unknown reasons from the position in 2017. That's when in December of 2017, Piranha Nightclub announced that Nebraska would be the new host. Alright, so if you don't know who Nebraska is, in the makeover challenge for season 5, Alaska was paired with an ex-military member called Mac, who would end up becoming Alaska's drag daughter for the episode being appropriately named Nebraska. Now prior to Drag Race, Mac had never done drag before and was actually a part-time model. He would then attend the season 5 finale out of drag along with Derek Barry, but never actually had any desire to do drag again. It was actually shortly after after Derek Barry got on season 8, that Derek insisted to Nebraska to try doing drag again, which he ended up doing and actually found a lot of enjoyment out of it. But of course, this was sort of controversial, since Nebraska's only claim to fame was being a guest on a makeover challenge, along with being the boyfriend of Derek Barry. So to many other queens and fans alike, there was a sort of annoyance in the air. So then, what was the drama all about? Well, after the club officially announced that Nebraska had become the new host for Tuesday nights, it didn't take long before India was giving her 
take on the situation. India reacted to the news of Nebraska replacing her by posting on Facebook a status that said how it was so sad and pathetic to see a manager ruin a somewhat good image of a nightclub by letting anyone who puts on a dress and a wig have their own night hosting. Adding that she remembers when you actually had to be a good and talented entertainer to get hired. Which was then followed by another post where she basically said that Nebraska just got lucky when she made it to the makeover challenge of season 5. This was also controversial because India also accused Nebraska that when she used to work at the Piranha nightclub out of drag, she allegedly was embezzling money and ultimately got fired. Nebraska responded to this by posting screenshots of India's messages to warn people of the dangers that jealousy could cause in the drag world. The online arguments sort of ended with a final post from India that served as a warning for anyone who may be new to drag. India's perspective was that Nebraska was chosen to replace India as the host of Piranha Nightclub. But Derek's perspective was that the only reason Nebraska was chosen was as a consequence to India getting fired from the job. Which brings us to almost three years later, to the year 2020, when India and Derek would both return to our screens. It was surprising to most people when India Farah was cast in All Stars 5 because there wasn't any known cases at that point of anyone that had actually asked for that. Yet you couldn't feel but have a sense of excitement to see what this queen was going to bring to a room filled with judgmental fans that didn't know much about her. And honestly, she didn't disappoint at all. That being said, even though it was the year 2020, some fans hadn't forgotten about the way that India had spoken about the show years ago. So, India would end up addressing shortly before the airing of All Stars 5 what she said years prior in 2012 where she explained how back then, she was so unpopular among the drag race queens that fans would sometimes push her out of the way to talk to the more popular queen. But she now understands that the show is meant to celebrate the art form of drag and was hoping for the opportunity to be able to come back to the competition to showcase herself again. Essentially, India was ready for a second chance and wanted to get a redemption in the legacy of the show, as well as get the hearts of the fan base. What's funny about the preseason of All Stars 5 is that even in the early promo interviews, Derek would be throwing constant shade at India. Uh, but to see her oh was shocking, um, to see that her drag hadn't changed uh, was shocking. And to be in the presence of her in front of who I believe are all stars was shocking. <laughs> It was clear that these two had issues with each other, because as soon as Derek walked into the workroom, we are informed through an awkward hug that there was still some underlying tensions between them. Even while the queens are getting ready, Derek decides to call out India Fair, creating a perfect storyline for producers to see play out on camera. India's run on All Stars 5, while not the most groundbreaking, was somewhat solid in terms of overall package. I mean, for starters, she won the talent show and she actually made the majority if not all of her runways, managing to make them look very elevator considering she was competing with some pretty big names. But like many people have discussed online, the decision to have Derek Barry go home on the first episode was a mistake from production, especially since Derek is a queen that really doesn't have a filter at all and would have provided us with countless more hilarious moments. Nevertheless, India would end up getting the last laugh. At least, that's what it looked like. Now, one of India Farah's main issues with season 3 was that her legacy on the show ended up being directly tied to Mimi on first, picking her up during the lip sync. That's all that fans would ever talk about when they met her. So she grew a resentment towards it. Regardless, India wanted to have some redemption in All Stars 5, but it's hard to decide whether that redemption truly lasted or not. When we get to the episode of the Snatch Game, after India had been up for elimination for four consecutive episodes, it was almost set in stone that it was her time to go. But I think what people tend to forget about this episode is that for a second, it seemed that during the liberations, Shea Coule, the person that had won the challenge, was heavily considering to send Alexis Mateo home before India even began her campaign against her. After all, Shay still had resentment from Alexis choosing her lipstick when Shay had been up for elimination on episode 3. Remember, everything you do, every action has a consequence, and you have to live with that. Do you want to talk one-on-one? -on -one? Um, no, I feel like I have everything that I need. The drama starts when India claimed that Alexis had been campaigning behind Shay's back to try to get the other queens to vote her out. But what India was not expecting was for Shay to straight up go to the other girls about what happened, causing one of the best dramatic moments in the workroom in a good while. Alexis said that India was lying, and India said that Alexis was lying. So it was hard to know who was truly saying the truth since the fact of the matter was that Alexis did at one point choose to eliminate Shay. But it was also suspicious that India chose 
when she was up for elimination to inform Shay of what happened. Regardless, Shay would still end up eliminated in India, with India choosing to leave with one of the best exit lines in Drag Race history. Ladies, I want you to remember the four H's, okay? I want you to live happy. I want you to listen to your heart, okay? I want you to remain humble, and most of all, be honest. In one of her exit interviews with Entertainment Weekly, India mentions that in the same way that she didn't like only being remembered by Mimi on first picking her up, she didn't want All Stars 5 to have the fans only remember the Derek Barry drama. Instead, she just wants to be seen for the amazing artist that she is and her drag. Yet India would go on to be remembered as the queen who lied about Alexis Mateo trying to sabotage Shea Coulee, ultimately crushing the cool redemption storyline that she had going on for herself. Yet I do appreciate India for spicing things up. I remember when I was watching the episode, the moment that the drama started with the accusations made by India and Shay immediately telling the rest of the queens gave me an excitement for drama that had been missing on the show for a while. So I'm not at all mad about what India did, even though she's pretty much the reason that Alexis Mateo didn't make it to the finale. That being said, it's sort of strange to see India never backed out of the lie that she made. I mean, Joey Nolfi from Entertainment Weekly asked her if she still stood by that statement, to which India said that she will say it's the truth until the day she dies. Subsequently, the show never actually showed any footage of the claims that India had made against Alexis. But what do you guys think? Was India lying or was she telling the truth? Moving on to two years after the airing of All Stars 5, in June 2022, India got into a Twitter spat with Shea Coulee, where India made a tweet saying that she's happy she works for herself and doesn't have to rely on being a slave for someone while getting paid close to nothing. To which Shea called out the use of the word slave during Juneteenth. But India didn't back down and argued back to Shay, saying that just like in All Stars 5, Shay was making something out of nothing, resulting in Shay calling India a liar for what happened, which I guess sort of confirms who it was that was really telling the truth. Plus, after Derek had been a guest on the pit stop and threw light shade at India, India would go on to make a tweet that shaded Derek on not having anything else better to do with her quote, crusty mouth. And of course, Derek Barry immediately took the opportunity to tweet about how happy she is for being booked and blessed. The end of the drama would result in India's husband making an Instagram story where he said that Derek Barry, Alexis Mateo, and Shea Coulee are bullies with really sad lives. So bringing this back to the root of the feud, as I said before, the drama between India and Derek all started when India decided to come for Nebraska. Well, Nebraska would end up making a resurgence in the spin-off series called Drag Race Review Las Vegas, which followed the queens as they got ready for their Vegas residency show, airing shortly after All Stars 5. In the show, despite Nebraska not being part of the official cast, she ended up being included in some of the storylines from the season, due to Derek inviting him to most of the events that they would go to, which of course tended to annoy some of the other queens, and it didn't help with the fan base that already didn't like her. Nebraska actually has a pretty bad reputation online. What I mean by this is that when you see her name, it's usually because someone is either making fun of the way she dances or talking about how she isn't a good drag queen, which of course is a subjective thing to each person. But it is true that Nebraska usually gets roasted online by the fans because of the way that she performs, which many have considered to be very stiff or lacking rhythm. Yet in August 2017, Nebraska ended up commenting under a post that had been made about her on Reddit where she addressed the people who seemed to dislike her. She says, quote, I'm just doing what makes me happy, and I don't mean for it to bring some of you to such negative headspaces. I apologize that me doing drag makes anyone feel that way. She adds that reading hate comments makes her feel very sad, and she doesn't understand why an art form like drag would get her so much hate, but that she's sort of used to it because she already receives that judgmental energy from her military peers. But it does hurt more when the bullying is coming from within the community. You'd think that there'd be more of an effort made by fans to not bully queens simply because they are a bad performer. I mean, if they aren't hurting anyone, is it really warranted? Anyway, the Derek Barry and India Fair feud is probably one of the longest running feuds in the modern Drag Race universe because it feels like every couple months, either one of these queens will end up trying to throw shade at the other. Which as an audience member, I kind of live for, just for how funny some of these interactions can truly be. That being said, we should just enjoy the drama for what it is and not crucify any of the parties involved. I wanted to take a moment to thank my patrons. In the Elite Pink Squad, we have Matthew Burns, Gay Uncle, and Wendell Norris Realtor. And in the Green Squad, we have The Only Sean, 
Owen Nicole, Edgar Allan Pup, Franny Fishsticks, Tamin Ritter Fury, Emma Malinger, and Azure. If you'd like to see your name on the screen, you can support me on Patreon. The link will be in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video and comment how you felt about this topic. Follow me on Twitter at GreenGayYT to receive updates on future content, and I'll see you guys next time.